In this video clip, I'm going to walk you through the process of taking all of your parts of the balsa wood glider and assemble those into a assembly file, which is an IAM file. This way you can visualize, get a good graphic rendering of all of the parts put together and combined to create the uh, balsa wood glider that you will soon be constructing in class. So in order for us to get started, uh, the first thing I'm doing is showing you what the glider could look like after it is assembled. This glider right here that is assembled on the screen is obviously the glider that I designed out on my rough sketch. So the rough sketch obviously is something that I can refer to uh, if I need to at any time. So let's go to File, New. We're going to be going into the Metric tab. This time we're going to be going to Standard Millimeter IAM rather than Standard Millimeter IPT. Uh, IPT is a part file which is, uh, represents the P and the T. The AM is assembly. Okay, so standard millimeter IAM. Hit OK. And we now have a blank screen with my X, Y, and Z axes. I'm ready to get started. So first thing I need to do is I'm going to see that I have an assembly panel now here. It's a little bit different from what I'm used to. I'm used to seeing the 2D part features and sketch panel. Um, so I'm going to go to place component and now I need to find from my balsa wood glider parts so I'm in the glider project so this is where you would go to your H drive and locate where you have your parts I'm going to find the fuselage first so there's my fuselage and hit open I want to do one piece at a time okay? and as you notice one piece has been placed and another one is lay, uh, lying here faint as, as a x-ray image I can right click on that and hit done. So that means that I just have one on here now. So one fuselage. So I'll rotate the screen. Okay, as you can see, I'm rotating the screen so that I'm seeing the front of the plane and the tra trailing edge of the plane in the back. And you can see these are the two recessed areas for which the uh, fins, stabilizer fins, will go in the back, vertical and horizontal, and then the um, wing that goes on the top here. Now please keep in mind that um, your design should be obviously different from what I have here. Uh, for one thing, putting the top indent or the recess part right here is not a good idea if you're uh, doing your own drawing because it can ultimately cause um, some structural failure whenever the plane does nosedive and hit the ground depending on if that's going to happen it can crack easily here so you may not want to recess this area or instead recess the, it from the bottom so if you look closely instead of recessing it from the top recess it from the bottom that way it's um, supported from underneath instead of from above alright so let's get started next thing I need to do hit escape so I'm no longer in the orbit tool or rotate tool and I'm gonna place the next component next component I will place is the wing so I will find my wing and hit open and place it anywhere you want right click done now we need to rotate this component so I'm going to scroll through my assembly options and hit the rotate component and rotate it to the direction it needs to go and this may take a little bit of time to maneuver okay and in some cases it may actually be sitting through and that's no problem alright from here uh, then escape to get out of that tool and I'm now ready to move things into place so let's get ready for the next step so now I want to constrain the wing to the fuselage and I'm gonna do that by selecting two edges that will be constrained or conjoined okay so I'm gonna be looking at the constrain option on the assembly panel and you can see how it has two separate parts and they're being joined together there are different options of how you want them to be joined. We're going to just look at uh, the mating option. So it's the mate, so that's the solution here. And I can rotate. And sometimes it makes it easier if you turn on the wire view. Or the you can even go to this view too. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. Alright, so let's go ahead and select this edge right here and I want to line it up rotate again with the bottom edge here okay 
And as you can see, I hit, have to hit apply for the changes to take place. And I can actually click and I can see that if I move it around, I can position it all along that edge. So both of those edges now line up. I can rotate again and slide this down so it sits nice and flush on top and then I can also rotate again looking at it from the top view let's go and look at it from the top view rotate it make sure everything is lined up and move it over okay so try to center it out as the best that you can okay it's not going to be perfect and that's okay so as you can see it's going a little bit too low right now so I'll raise it up zoom in that looks good right there and let's try looking at it again visualize it is there any space left over yes there is so it's not sitting flat until we go right like this and we can center it out inside if we wanted it to and there may be a little bit of a gap here in the front or in the back it all depends on what you want it to look like and we'll leave it at that that looks good to me all right so let's rotate and slide it back into place rotate again see it's a little bit finicky to get it to where exactly where you want it to be all right and there we go now to do the vertical and horizontal stabilizers let's go to the back go to constrain I'm sorry not constrain but we're going to place a new component and we're going to go with the horizontal stabilizer first hit open and right click done now let's rotate this component right like this and we're going to do the same thing we did before where we're going to constrain using the mating option and constrain this edge to this edge right here so let's rotate again so we can get to that edge. Zoom in. There we go. And then simply hit apply, close this out, and raise it up. And then we're good. Rotate, let's see what this looks like. You can slide it over just a little bit. So that it's centered out. Looks good to me. And the last step is a vertical stabilizer. So let's go up again, place component, vertical stabilizer, hit open, right click, done, and let's rotate. Rotate, there we go. Make sure we have the right piece. All right. Let's go to constrain. Let's constrain this edge to this edge right here. Hit apply. Let's see what that looks like. And as you can see, we have some issues there that we may need to work out, so I'm going to hit undo. try to reposition however that might work so you may need to do some repositioning to get that to work anytime you make a mistake like we did here you can actually undo it by just simply hitting this button right here or control Z and you can also go back into your model menu and look at what mates you already have in the uh, history so I'm gonna get rid of this mate delete it so nothing is attached at this time. We'll raise this up again. Where it's supposed to be. 
rotate just to make sure that's where we want it. good for now. Alright, so let's go ahead and constrain the edges that we want. Let's try this again. We could do this line in the middle against this edge. Alright, apply, hit escape, and yeah, see, still have it messed up. So we gotta bring that down first. Bring this down. And merge it. Or we can go over here. Use the constraint option and constrain this edge to this edge. Which doesn't always work either. So you're gonna have to mess around with it to get it to where you want it to be for the vertical stabilizer. There we go. We're getting more of what we want now. And slide this over. And move this in. Okay, so that's as good as it's going to get for now. Let's rotate, see what we have here. And there's your finished glider up to this point. So you, there will be some tinkering around that you will need to do in order to get everything where you want it to be and remember it's not going to be completely perfect when you're finished okay so that's how you're going to create your assembly in this video clip and the next video clip will show you how to do an exploded view animation and that is it